the story of bloodshed and regret, the rape that sparked a civil war. Have you ever heard of the story of rape that caused a civil war? This story originated from the Book of Judges, which involved so much unexpected and unimaginable acts between the tribe of Benjamin and the cheating wife of the Levite. The rape that sparked a civil war. It all started with a man, a Levite residing in the remote regions of Ephraim, seeking his wife who had committed adultery and returned to her father's house. Longing for her, he went to retrieve her with his servant. However, the wife's father, unwilling to let them leave, detained them until the fifth day. Frustrated, the Levite left with his wife, and as night fell, they sought refuge in Gibeah, an Israeli city belonging to the tribe of Benjamin. But this tribe and its city had an unusual quietness at night, of which you could only hear the sounds of farm birds within the area. As they kept on working, the slave asked his master not to keep on going, cause the streets were too lonely, but he disagreed, saying he needed an inn where he could spend the night. Still persisting, the slave man cried again to his master, saying, Master, this city is not as you know. I have experienced great harm beyond words could explain, because the men who lives in this city are known for violence and hostility towards outsiders, who keep out late during the night hour. Just as he was talking, there was a mighty outcry for help, which left his master and his wife running towards a different direction leaving the slave. When the Levite had stopped running, he decided to knock on doors for help. But no one offers them lodging, except for an old man from Ephraim. While enjoying their meal, a monstrous mob from that same town of the tribe of Benjamin surrounds the house, demanding the Levite for sexual acts. Imagine the horror of this scene as the old man tries to reason with the mob offering his own virgin daughter and his wife in desperation to save his guest. But the lust of this monstrous mob was insatiable. While they made their demands, and as they tried to burn the house down, the Levite did the unthinkable, the unimaginable, throwing his wife off the window to the mob of rapists just to save himself, subjecting her to a night of brutal abuse and rape. At dawn, they released her. But she could barely walk, so as the woman went to the entrance, while knocking, fell down at the door of the old man's house. When the Levite came out to her, he discovered that she was dead and out of rage. He divided her into twelve pieces, limb by limb, and sent her throughout the territory of all the twelve tribes of Israel. There was a great outrage, as such had never happened in the land before, and the twelve tribes gathered at Mizpah, except for the tribe of Benjamin, totaling 400,000 trained foot soldiers. The Levite then narrated the brutal ordeal that happened to him and what befell his wife. Upon hearing this, the elders all swore an oath that no one should return home until they sought justice for the vileness that have been done in the land of Israel. At this point, the elders of Israel had a common goal greater than themselves and were united beyond family gossip. So they sent word to the elders of the tribe of Benjamin to deliver the perpetrators to them, but the elders of Benjamin defiled the order and would not provide the men who had displayed such an act of wickedness. Instead, they gathered together from their cities to Gibeah, asking them to join them in battle against the other eleven tribe. This led to the tribe of Benjamin, having with them 26,000 men warriors, and also 700 men in their ranks who were skilled in archery. This single act from the tribe of Benjamin led to a fierce battle between the twelve tribes of Israel. The tribe of Judah was chosen to lead the assault against Benjamin, but they suffered a devastating defeat. The other tribes wept as they had incurred more losses than expected, then they sought the Lord's guidance and after divine counsel, re-engaged in battle. Forming a battle line at the place where it was on the first day, but yet again, they suffered a humiliating defeat and 18,000 Israeli soldiers were killed. 
This war becomes a cycle of violence, with each victory met by another tragic defeat. It begs the question, could this bloodshed have been avoided if the Benjamites had simply surrendered the perpetrators? Upon this defeat, all the men of Israel went up to Bethel and wept and sat there before the Lord, and they fasted on that day until evening, offering burnt offerings and peace offerings unto the Lord. Then the Lord promised to deliver the Benjamites into their hands. At this point, the eleven tribes felt cheated and wondered why a loving God would choose to defend the sinful tribe of Benjamin, whose evil act has brought death to a very large number of the tribe of Israel. Nevertheless, they encouraged themselves upon the words of the Lord, because the Lord has never failed. After this, the word of the Lord came upon them and inspired in the heart of warriors what they should do, and the thought of executing this plan brought great joy to their hearts. So they went up again, but this time they set ambushment around the whole city, and as the battle began, they drew the men of Benjamin away from their city, killing about 10,000. They also came upon the city of Benjamin and burned it with fire. When the Benjamites saw their city burning, they lost heart and the men of Israel began to kill them, slaughtering about 125,000 Benjamites. Then they proceeded to all their cities and killed every single person, both man, women, children, animal, and set their cities on fire. Only about 600 men of the Benjamites escaped and fled into the wilderness to the Rock of Rimming, and they stayed there four months. The mountain was their only hope of safety because they had lost brothers, sisters, wives, husbands, livestock, families, and even more. These singular moments show how depressing and hopeless the effects of war can bring upon a nation. To the nation and tribe of Benjamin, the cause of war was their pride in their military power that led them to defend the evil act committed in their city. Once more, this pride had led to the dwindling state of their population to about 600 men with no future and hope of growing their tribe, still yet. This was not the end of the tribe of Benjamin, because they went on to plead with the Lord for mercy, and this was what happened. The story takes an unexpected twist, for the other eleven tribes began to grieve. For there was a void in Israel, and they had all sworn not to give their daughters to the tribe of Benjamin in marriage, who were currently six hundred men in number. Nevertheless, brotherly love is deeper than the pain caused by a loved one, so the other tribes had a meeting and found out, that there was a city who did not join the battle till the very end when supporting the tribe of Benjamin. So they sent 12,000 of their most valiant warriors to the city of Jabesh Gilead and commanded the warriors to kill every male and every woman who had been with a man sexually, but to keep the virgins alive. They did as they were told and slaughtered the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead and found there 400 virgins and they took them and brought them before the elders. The elders then made peace with the six hundred men of Benjamin who were left and gave them the virgins as wives. But there were still two hundred of them who had no wives. Then the elders did a strange thing. A yearly feast of the Lord in Shiloh was being observed. So the elders told the men to lie in wait, so that when the daughters of Shiloh come out to perform their dance, they can catch them and make them wives and take them to the land of Benjamin, so they could multiply and not be small. Yet again, the tribe of Benjamin, using their inborn skill of tactics, kidnapped wives for themselves, and when the fathers and brothers of the women which were captured came to complain to the elders, they appealed to them, saying, Be kind to them for our sakes, because we did not take a wife for any of them in war, for it is not as though you have given the women to them at this time, lest you break the oath you swore. What are your thoughts on the actions taken by the Levite and the tribes of Israel? Do you believe the tribe of Benjamin received just the punishment meant for them? What lessons can we learn from this story in our own lives? The story of bloodshed and regret serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of unchecked rage, desire, and the devastating effects of war. It also challenges us to consider the complexities of justice and the moral dilemmas that often arise in its pursuit. For in no circumstance is cheating committing fornication or adultery accepted as Christians, the aftermath of it will bring about unimaginable pain, sufferings, and may lead to depression and death. 
I hope this story brings peace and love to families that has lost all sense of love and kindness towards one another. Please share your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. This episode is a biblical narrative from the book of Judges 1921.